everybody. This is Monica from Huckleberry Mountain Botanicals with Lindy. Lindy. She's going to get um, linked to the prepared homestead. Yeah, linked over to the prepared homestead. Yeah. So we're going to do that real quick. Close posty. Ah, there we go. Okay, so, it, you know, you should have your phone so yes. we can talk to people on the prepared homestead. Mm -hmm. Okay, today I am going to talk about chamomile. Uh, first, let me talk about growing it because it's one of those plants that I think everyone should be growing and it is super, super, super easy. It is not difficult at all. Um, I brought a, a, a little tiny flower. I was going to pull some of the plant out there because I have some beautiful, nice big ones. And then I have lots of little baby ones all over that have sort of planted themselves. But I really didn't want to take, take the plants out and bring them in. So growing. Um, it is not a picky or particular plant at all. If you're interested in growing chamomile, pick somewhere where it's going to get, you know, some decent amount of water at first. But really, it's not that picky about soil. And once it gets established, it will spread. You let, you know, I pull the flowers and I do it continually through the season so it keeps putting out flowers. But then when it, as, as it's getting near the end, leave some of the flowers behind and let them go to seed. And then you will find that every year you get new and more plants interestingly in my garden um and i if you've ever been to any of my talks i tell you this and people that that come over see i don't keep this nice tidy garden it is not tidy it is kind of crazy. wild <laughs> yeah wild. wild like me <laughs> uh so what i did the first year that i put chamomile there is i made like a little rock border to keep people from stepping on it and then the next year it spread, but it went out a little further. So I put the rock border further out. So now there's a little narrow walkway that you have to go through. Now it's moved into the walkway. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm always telling people, be careful where you step. <laughs> Everywhere's a plant. Everywhere's a plant. So, so once you get it going, it's really, really super easy to grow. That's all I'm going to say about that. Oh, that felt like, what's his name? Forest. Skin. Oh, yes. Okay, now we're going to talk about some uses because chamomile, I know probably all of you know chamomile really well as a sleep aid. That's sort of what it's known for. Chamomile tea. Yeah, everybody knows like, oh, if I need to sleep, I'm going to have chamomile tea. Of course, they grab the little tiny bags and make their little yeah. tiny. That's not going to have actually have very much medicinal value, but no, but it will have like a relax you value. Right. <laughs> kind of like any tea, it's it's less about just the constituents, even though those are very important. It's also the experience. Experience of the tea. It's a warm yeah. liquid. It's sitting in I don't know. It's it's sipping something warm. And yeah, and you smell it and you know, a cup of tea can be quite yes. medicinal like just in itself. Oh, you decided to show up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um so but let's talk about a few other <laughs> other uses because this is actually a really really good herb to have around it not only has that ability to relax when you're trying to go to sleep but it also can calm cranky irritable children and like Matthew Wood says adults who are acting like children and sometimes I feel that way. So sometimes chamomile. I really need some chamomile. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it really hits you. Um, but it's also a really good, um, a really good herb to take for irritated stomach, gas, uh, you know, spasming, and a great one to give to children for colic. And this is safe even for, you know, small small children, babies, as long as they're not, you know, have an allergy to the aster family. But that's generally not a problem. Uh, colic, teething, uh, sleep. And then this is one that, this is what we're going to be using it for today, antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. I have used this on several occasions, uh, be, partly because that's what we had. 
Um, remember when Hero hurt his thumb? Yes. And he, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what he did. Something but... happened and... We were visiting family and we were coming home. Yeah, he, he was starting to get some kind of small infection. Infection on his thumb. Yeah. And so we had chamomile tea bags. And I just brewed it up and stuck it on there. And he's such a sport. He just held it on his thumb. Yeah, he did. Yep. It took the inflammation down and got rid of the infection. And then whatever happened healed up. I also have used it when my, one of my daughters got what we think was a spider bite. And it started getting infected. And it looked pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And again, she had chamomile tea at her house. I wasn't there. She had chamomile tea, so she started putting chamomile tea directly yeah. on it. Yeah. And it took down that inflammation and um, started helping to heal and get rid of whatever infection was happening. Because it is antibacterial. Hi, Shamra. Hi, Shamra. It is antibacterial and anti-inflammatory and can help speed healing. So this is what we're going to do today is make art the first step in making an antibacterial ointment. And that means that we're going to make the antibacterial oil using chamomile. There are a lot of other herbs you could do, but this is the one that we're choosing. And I'll probably add essential oil to it as well on top of it. We could put, you know, tea tree or we could choose to even just do chamomile essential oil in there. It doesn't really matter. Oh, I'm on low battery. We better get um, we are. something. 10%. Uh oh. Yeah, get a cord. Okay. So the first thing I, I want to talk about first when you're making oil, please, when you're making medicinal oil, use dried herb. Do not try to use fresh herb most of the time. There are some that it doesn't matter that much. Organ grape is one of those because it's already quite dry and you're using um, the root. But most of them you'll want to use dry. I'm going to fill this up about halfway at the jar. You can decide how big of a jar you want, but you know, remember that when you make this oil, you're going to have massive amounts of oil unless you're making it you want to make some for Christmas gifts you know this is a great time to start thinking about that because most of the time we don't start thinking about Christmas gifts until like a month and a half before and then it's too late to make stuff like this so starting right now making this and then creating salves or ointments putting together little herbal first aid kids for your family or friends um, you know all kinds of things you can do if you've actually planned ahead. So this would be a great, a great gift. Now I'm just going to put the oil in here, fill it up almost to the top, and I'm gonna get my chopstick again. <laughs> it's like almost dead. I don't know how my, my thing almost died. All right, so I got all the Stuff out of there. If I had a little bit more oil, I would probably just keep filling it all the way to the top to ensure that everything stays underneath. I'm going to watch this and make sure that it stays covered. And then we'll be labeling this and leave it four to six weeks. There are other ways to do it, but today this is the only one I'm going to talk about. Some people like to put it in the sun. Some people like to keep it in a dark cupboard. We usually keep it in a dark cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. There are ways that you can do infused oil with heat that I will cover in a future video. Um, but for right now, this is a really, really easy, simple way to do this. And you want to kind of mm, mix it around for about the first week or two on a daily basis, and then you can leave it alone and just kind of let it sit for the rest of the time. Now, what if some of the herb is showing? What should I do? You should add more oil? Yes, add, add more oil. <laughs> Sorry. I'm giving you like pop quizzes right here. Live pop live. quizzes. <laughs> I was confused for a second, just, yeah. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I know. All right, so um, that's that's the first step to making the antibacterial ointment because the one that Lindy made yesterday, which by the way, didn't she do a great job? What? Thank you. She really did. 
Um, so we'll be using this then to make that ointment and adding a couple of other things with the essential oils to, to create that antibacterial ointment so that you can start building your first aid kit, your herbal first aid kit. All right, so I think that's it. If you have any questions, let us know. Please like my page, Huckleberry Mountain Botanicals, and um, join us. Turn on notifications. Oh yeah, turn on notifications. Yeah, turn on notifications for live videos. Yeah, and do remember that every um, it's Monday through Thursday, 6.30, we'll be here. Either me or her mm -hmm. or both of us. Yes. All right, until next time, help and joy. Bye.